Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim In the name of God, the compassionate and merciful My dear students of first year MBS The last and the fourth very important basic tissue is the nervous tissue And in the first year MBS we are going to just have got a simple introduction about the nervous system the more developed and the more important histology of the nervous system will be studied in second year MBBS where we will study the histology of the cerebral cortex and the cerebellar cortex and the spinal cord. Here in this lecture I am just going to tell you about the major things about the central nervous system. As I will start from the saying that the nervous system is actually it is ectodermal in origin it is developed from the ectoderm and it is the neuron is the basic fundamental structural and functional unit of the nervous system and a neuron is nothing but this is a modified epithelial cell and it is the uh, neuron and there are neuroglia and uh, some connective tissue which is present in the skull and the vertebral canal. As I have told you that this is ectodermal in origin and it consists of modified epithelial cells and these epithelial cells they have got two very important and very well developed properties of the protoplasm. They are excitable they have got the conductivity. In response to certain physical and chemical stimuli, the cells are excited and they then give rise to a response in the form of an electrical current which is passing over the cell membrane. And by the passage of this current, the nerve impulse is conducted over the cell membrane. And this wave of depolarization or action potential it receives the information from the periphery and it then orders the uh, information and the uh, actions uh, from the central nervous system towards the periphery. So in this way you can say that the nervous system is composed of the central nervous system, there is a peripheral nervous system and there is an autonomic nervous system. The central nervous system Again it is composed of the brain and the spinal cord and in the peripheral nervous system we have got 31 pairs of the spinal nerves and there are 12 pairs of the cranial nerves. You are knowing that the autonomic nervous system has got two divisions, the sympathetic and the parasympathetic division. This is the brain. You can see that brain is then again it has got certain parts that is the forebrain and the hindbrain and the midbrain. Forebrain, hindbrain and the midbrain. I will tell you, I will start from the embryology of the uh, nervous system. Let's talk about the embryology. In the fourth week of, in the third, in the third week of the intrauterine life, there appears in the third week of intrauterine life there appears a thickening at the mid dorsal region of an embryo this is an embryo and you can see that at the dorsal side in the mid dorsal region of the embryo there appears a thickening which is known as the neural plate and this neural plate then it becomes a groove like structure and this is known as the neural groove it is a slipper shaped uh, it is a slipper shaped structure and then later on this neural groove this uh, its lateral edges they combine together gives rise to a tube like structure which is known as the neural tube and this neural tube is your future brain and the spinal cord initially the neural tube is open on both ends at the anterior neuropore and the posterior neuropore then in the fifth week of intrauterine life there appears three 
primary brain vesicles there appears three dilatations towards the sphalic end of the tube towards the cranial end of the tube there appears the prosencephalon the mesencephalon and the rhombencephalon the prosencephalon is the fore brain the mesencephalon is the mid brain and the rhombencephalon is actually the hind brain and the hind brain is again it is composed of the hind brain is composed of the medulla oblongata the pons and the cerebellum mid brain is a small piece of brain which is connecting the hind brain with the fore brain and fore brain is composed of the cerebrum in the form of the two cerebral hemispheres which are joined by a corpus callosum which is a big commission which join the two sides of the the left and right cerebral hemispheres and in the then again later on the prosencephalon is further divided into the telencephalon and the diencephalon telencephalon becomes the cerebrum and the <coughs> diencephalon is your future thalamus and the hypothalamus the mesencephalon remains as such in the form of the mid brain the rhombencephalon gives rise to the three parts that is the brain stem brain stem is nothing but this is the pons and the medulla oblongata if we talk about the hind brain hind brain is composed of the this is the cerebellum and this is the um, pons and the medulla oblongata these are the three parts of the hind brain here i like to tell you that you know this is the neural tube which gives rise to these all the parts of the brain and the spinal cord the primary brain vesicles they then continue uh, downwards in the vertebral canal through the foramen magnum and this part of the tube will be developing into the spinal cord as it is a tube so in the tube there is a lumen you know and this lumen it dilates towards the primary brain vesicles in the form of the cavities which are known as the ventricles rhombencephalon is known as the rhombencephalon because it has got a rhomboid shaped cavity which is the fourth ventricle and then in the mid brain there is a small duct which is known as the cerebral aqueduct and this cerebral aqueduct then enters into the cavity of the diencephalon which is the third ventricle and third ventricle is continuous with the cavities in the both cerebral hemispheres which are the lateral ventricles and in the uh, spinal cord the lumen of the neural tube will remain as such in the form of a canal which is known as the spinal canal so स्पाइनल कॉर्ड के बीचों बीच एक कैनाल रन कर रही है और ये जो न्यूरल ट्यूब का ल्यूमन है ये जिस तरफ डायलिटेशन अपीयर होती हैं उस तरफ ये कैविटीज बनाता है जिनको हम फोर्थ वेंट्रिकल थर्ड वेंट्रिकल और लेटरल वेंट्रिकल कहते हैं एंड दीज कैविटीज एंड कैनाल इन दी ब्रेन दे आर लाइन बाई अ सिंपल कोलमर एपिथीलियम which is known as the appendyma and these are the cavities which contains a fluid which is known as the cerebrospinal fluid so cerebrospinal fluid is a very important fluid we need cerebrospinal fluid sometimes to diagnose the diseases of the central nervous system so we do a lumbar puncture and we remove the cerebrospinal fluid and we are not going to and pierce the spinal cord but here i will want to tell you that the brain and the spinal cord is the gift of the god and god has wrapped the gift in two rather three meninges there are three uh, membranes which are covering the brain and the spinal cord and these three dense irregular connective tissue membranes they are known as the meninges the dura so nature has provided the 
brain and the spinal cord, there are three membranes which are made up of dense irregular connective tissue and these membranes are the dura matter and the recrine matter and the pia matter. The dura matter is uh, the membrane which is outer and middle one is the recrine matter and one which immediately surrounds the brain and the spinal cord is called the pia matter. And as you can very well imagine that there will be a space in between the pia matter and the arachnoid matter that is known as the subarachnoid space. And in between the arachnoid and dura we have got the subdural space. Subarachnoid space is the space where circulates the cerebrospinal fluid. So we will, re we, will uh, we will take the cerebrospinal fluid by lumbar puncture by piercing the uh, in fourth and fifth in between the fourth and the fifth lumbar vertebrae we will put a wide bore needle and we will remove from the subarachnoid space the cerebrospinal fluid and we will uh, take the cerebrospinal fluid for the pathological examinations for the lab testing and as you know that the spinal cord and the brain it is composed of the neurons and the neuroglia as regards the composition of the brain and the spinal cord we have got the actual functional portion that is parenchyma of the brain consists of millions of neurons neuron which is a basic fundamental structural and functional unit of the nervous system this is a modified epithelial cell and this cell has got the property of excitability and irritability and conductivity but there are also cells if there are millions of neurons there are billions of neuroglia neuron binding cells and neuron glue neuron ko jodne wale cells ko neuroglia kehte hain neuroglia are the specialized connective tissue cells present in the nervous system and these are known as the uh, astroglia, the oligodendroglia, microglia and the ependymal cells. These are actually the cells which provide the nourishment and support to the nervous system that is the neurons. And here I will introduce you about the grey matter and the white matter. In the brain and the spinal cord where there is the collection of the neurons that area is seen with the naked eye as a greyish area and we call it the grey matter and where there is the collection of the fibers these fibers because the most of the fibers are myelinated and the myelin sheet I will tell you later on about the myelin sheet so these myelinated nerve fibers they are seen white in color so the collection of the white matter is actually nothing but this is the collection of the fibers and the grey matter is the collection of the nerve cell bodies and here I will want to tell you that the distribution of the grey matter is on the outer side in the form of the uh, cerebral and cerebellar cortex in the central nervous system in the brain and in the spinal cord the grey matter is on the inner side and white matter is on the outer side the grey matter in the spinal cord is in the form of a central grey column which is lying in the center of the uh, center of the spinal cord in the form of a column like edge shaped structure and on around this edge shaped structure that is the central grey column we have got the white matter so the grey matter and the white matter this is another very important concept um, in the nervous tissue there are two types of cells the nerve cells which are the neurons they receive and transmit the impulses and then neuroglial cells more numerous than the neurons they support the neurons in various ways there are capillaries present there are no lymphatics another very important type of the tissue is actually the uh, the connective tissue uh, as I have told you that the uh, spinal cord and the brain is covered by the meninges which are the dense irregular connective tissue membranes 
then let's talk about the neurons neuron is a very specialized cell and you can see this is one of the neurons it consists of three components there is a nerve cell body there are dendrites dendron mean tree and these are actually the cytoplasmic extensions around the nerve cell body in the form of a tree drakht ki shaakhon ki tarah phele hue processes ko dendrites kehte hain and then there is a very long cylindrical process which runs downwards and this process is of uniform diameter and it ends up at a mm, uh, at a swollen end which is called the terminal so there are three components of the neuron the soma the dendrites and the axon and this type of a cell is a very important cell and with all the usual organelles which are present in the cell let's talk about the nerve cell that is the neuron the neurons are of different types we can classify the neurons here in there are multiple there is a morphological classification there is a functional classification there is the neurons according to the length of the neuron another classification is the functional classification there are sensory neurons there are motor neurons that is afferent and efferent as regard the structure of the neuron neuron consists of a nerve cell body which is known as the perikaryon and perikaryon is very important the area around the nucleus is called the perikaryon in the nerve cell body there is a neuron there is a in the nerve cell body there is a nucleus which is Uh, euchromatic it is pale stain with a lot of dispersed chromatin material but in the center there is a very prominent nucleolus and it gives rise to an owl's eye appearance the area around the nucleus is called the perikaryon perikaryon or soma this is because of the fact that in the perikaryon there are all the usual organelles present but very important thing to mention here is the nissel granule or the nissel body and there are neurofibrils in the form of the microtubules and the neurofilaments and microfilaments the nissel bodies are nothing but these are the heaps of or the clusters of rough endoplasmic reticulum which are studded with the ribosomes and the polysomes and the nissel bodies are actually they are lying at the proximal ends of the dendrites the area from where the axon emerges that is known as the axon hyalux and axon hyalux this is the axon hyalux and from the axon hyalux we will see that there are no nissel granules present nissel granules these are the nissel bodies or the nissel corpuscles which are lying at the proximal ends of the dendrites and this area this pyramidal shaped it is hill like area called the axon hyalux from where the axon emerges is devoid of these so this is the nucleus which is present in the center of the cell with a very prominent nucleolus so x this is called the owl's eye appearance then in the cytoplasm there are all the usual organelles there will be the golgi body there will be a lot of ribosomes there will be a, um, a lot of lysosomes the like lipid and uh, granules and the uh, other uh, pigment granules but the most important thing is the presence of the nissel bodies melanin in certain regions for example in the substantia nigra and it may be by product of the synthesis of dopamine and noradrenaline there is lipofuscin more in older adults crowded organelles and nucleus to one side and may affect the neuron function there are lipid droplets may be energy reserve or the result of the metabolism the cytoskeleton of the perikaryon it is made up of the microtubules which are 24 nanometers there are neurofilaments which are 10 nanometers in diameter 
there are intermediate filaments neurofibrils possibly are clumped bundles of the neurofilaments so this is the perikaryon you can see the owl's eye appearance nucleus all the usual smooth endoplasmic reticulum the ribosomes the lysosomes the initial substances and you can see the dendrites which are the cytoplasmic extensions around the body and there is a long cylindrical process which is of uniform diameter and runs downwards this may attain a length of 100 cm and this is the axon Neurons are a variable size. They are 5 to 150 microns in diameter. Their shape is spherical and sometimes angular. An axon, which is myelinated or unmyelinated with terminals and synaptic junctions, it is up to 100 centimeters in length. That's the reason I have said that the neuron is the longest cell in the body. let's talk about the dendrites these are highly branched just like the branches of a tree receptive surface for the synaptic junctions tens of thousands of synapses on large dendrites dendritic spines are located on the surface of some dendrites spines diminish with age and poor nutrition then axons axon projects from cell body at axon high look Some axons are up to 100 centimeters in large animals. Axon high look pyramidal shaped region of the soma that is devoid of rough endoplasmic reticulum. That is, there are no nasal bodies present there. Initial segment is the portion of axon from its origin to the beginning of the myelin sheet, referred as the spike trigger zone. At spike trigger zone, summation of excitatory and inhibitory impulses occur. then there are collateral branches the axons may be myelinated or unmyelinated here i would like to tell you these are the myelinated segments this is the node of ranvier the area between the two nodes is called the internode this is the initial segment starting from the axon hyalic up till the first segment which is myelinated this bare area is called the initial segment then these are the myelinated segments which are known as the nodes and uh, nodes of ranvier and are actually the interruptions it is just like ye bijli ki tar ki tarah hota hai bijli ki tar mein jo copper wire hoti hai jo live hoti hai uske upar ek insulation chadi hui hoti hai aur wo plastic insulation hoti hai आप इमेजिन करें अगर हम उसको जगह जगह से काट दें निपल कर दें और उस जगह से उस कॉपर वायर को नंगा कर दें तो उनको हम नोड्स ऑफ रैनवियर कहेंगे सो दीज आर दी नोड्स ऑफ रैनवियर दिस इज अ नोड ऑफ रैनवियर दिस इज अ नोड ऑफ रैनवियर एंड एरिया बिटवीन दी टू नोड्स इज कॉल्ड दी इंटर नोड दी लॉन्गर इज दी न्यूरोन दी लॉन्गर विल बी दी इंटर नोड एंड थिक विल बी दी माइल इन let's talk about the classification of the neurons there is a morphological classification that is there are multipolar neurons and the bipolar neurons and the unipolar neuron multipolar neurons are the most common type of neurons from the multiple poles of the nerve cell body there arises the many dendrites and there is a single axon the bipolar neurons they these neurons are located in the vestibular and cochlear ganglia they are actually the spindle shaped cells they have got two poles on one pole there is an axon and on the other pole there is a dendrite then there are unipolar also known as the pseudo unipolar these are located in the dorsal root ganglia and the other ganglia of the spinal sensory nerves in the um, 
the functional category of the neurons their motor efferent neurons conduct the impulses to the muscle and the neurons and the gland then sensory or afferent neurons which receive the information from the periphery and there are interneurons which form the local circuits so this is the picture which can show you this is a multipolar neuron this is a pseudo unipolar pseudo unipolar इसलिए कहते हैं इसको देखो this is the nerve cell body it gives rise to um, an axon which immediately divides into two in a T like fashion bifurcates and gives rise to an axon and a dendrite so this is a spindle shaped cell a globular cell which gives rise to the dendrites on